Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all doing really well. So today I am doing an old school April themed haul. So everything in this haul except for one item is vintage. So I have some books, some goosebumps and Fear Street and all the things and also some clothing. So there is a really, really great company out of Toronto, Canada. They're called Retro Kid and they have fully licensed merchandise that features some really, really great retro Canadian shows. And they recently had their third birthday and everything in the shop was 40% off. So I went a little ham and I bought a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I wanted these items anyway, but one item specifically is for a collaboration video that I have coming up with a few other people and so because I was putting in the order I bought a whole bunch of stuff um, you're not gonna get 40% off every single day so super super excited for that it's also halfway to Halloween so I have my pumpkin queen hoodie on today and my witchy gloves so the main reason why I'm so excited about this video is because Yesterday in the mail, I received a very large package all the way from Texas. Um, I have a bookish friend over on Instagram. Her name is Natalie. So she reached out to me and she said, you know, I have some old Goosebumps books that I would love to send you maybe in a trade. And um, she put together a huge package of books and all kinds of goodies from Texas. So I have opened the package because I wanted to make sure that everything was intact and because I knew that there was going to be a drink in there, so I wanted to get it into the fridge, but I haven't looked through it. Um, I'm super, super excited to see what's in here. And so big thank you to Natalie. I'll leave her Instagram linked down below if you guys wanna go give her a follow. She has a great channel over there as well. And so before anything else, thank you so much, Natalie, for putting that together. It was really, really kind of you. And you should be receiving your package really, really soon from Canada. So that was super great to put together a trade package and include some goodies in there that neither one of us has available to us where we live. So we're gonna hop right into that first. So I will have timestamps for everything below so you guys can follow along if you just wanna see the books or the unboxing or the clothes or whatever. Super, super excited for this haul. I'm on vacation right now. So I just wanna do all the bookish things and record some videos to try to relax and get over this burnout that I'm in. I'm also in a really big reading slump. Like this is probably the longest in probably three years that I've been in a reading slump. So trying to get out of that too. So really, really hoping that shooting some videos and getting really excited about books again is going to help me with that as well. So jumping right into this very large package. So she included a note. It said, thank you for accepting to do this with me. Much love from Natalie. So I will go through the books first and just right off the bat, I'm seeing that these are in really, really great condition. Okay, so we have 12 books here and they're all pretty much immaculate, like very, very little damage. So I'm sure there's probably going to be some in this package that I already have in my collection, but the Goosebumps books that I have are not in great shape. So I always say yes to accepting these because you know, I can trade out and see which ones are in better condition. And the other thing is, is that I don't have any of the Ghosts of Fear Street books, like the spin-offs of the Fear Street, and I don't have any of the spin-offs of the Goosebumps either. So this shelf is actually going to be dismantled here very quickly after I'm shooting videos and we're going to be expanding the library and then I can accept more vintage goodness. So here we have Ghosts of Fear Street. This is does it have a number number eight, and it's the ooze, and it says it's alive and it's hungry. So sorry about the glare there. You're probably gonna get a bit of glare on these. So fantastic condition. And next one is also a Ghosts of Fear Street. This is number eleven, the boy who ate Fear Street. So I've heard so much about this book, but. Like I said, I haven't read any of the Ghosts of Fear Street and the covers are all wonderfully embossed. So this is great. So that's the boy who ate Fear Street. And this is Ghosts of Fear Street number seven, Fright Night, but it's a knight as in like a knight in shining armor kind of deal here. 
hope you guys can see the covers on okay on these so that looks great and again it's all embossed on the front and then the next one ghosts of fear street this is number 15 fright christmas So that has a great cover it says this christmas carol will scare the pickens out of you so that's going to be um, really nicely thematic to read during the holidays and then we have ghosts of fear street number 13 how to be a vampire it's a big pain in the neck So these are these are so great these are in such great condition so this one i didn't check the other ones but this one is a first printing from october of 1996 and i mean like i said it's almost perfect condition so that's great and then we have ghosts of fear street number nine revenge of the shadow people and it says the terror is off the wall And then some out of the classic Goosebumps series. So we have number two. This is Stay Out of the Basement. And this is definitely in better condition than what mine is. And then we have number 11, The Haunted Mask, which of course, if you're going to ask people what their favorite Goosebumps is, a lot of people will probably say this one. This That's a terrifying book. And the show, um, the, the episode of the Goosebumps show that was The Haunted Mask was just as terrifying. And then we have number 13, Piano Lessons Can Be Murder. And it says, play it again, hands. So this one has a little something on the front. I can't quite determine what it is, but still definitely in better condition than the one I have. And then we have number 35, a shock, a shocker on Shock Street. It's a real dead end. And we have the giant ant here. And then number 53, Chicken Chicken is a finger licking nightmare. Um, and this one, Unfortunately, the bottom corner is missing, but other than that, the book looks really, really good. And then the last one out of the Goosebumps Most Wanted, um, here comes the Shaggedy. And this is number nine out of that spinoff series. Like I said, I have none of these. So this is my first one in that particular series. And like I said, so excited to get some more room on the shelves so I can start collecting more vintage goodness. So I think, I think I mentioned this before that that's kind of my plan is to read through the books that I have that are new fiction and the ones that I'm keeping is mainly collector's editions. So the library is going to be mainly vintage coming up here, hopefully fairly quickly. Uh, so super excited about that and really, really excited to go through my Goosebumps collection and change out for some of the ones that aren't in such great condition and add some more. So. That's 12 new books to add to the collection. And then this box is chocker block full of goodies. So the first thing is, and like I said, I put this in the fridge. So she sent up two of these. It's called Big Red. So I looked this up. I think it's supposed to be like a, like a cream soda type drink. So I have a little glass with some ice and we'll give this a go. There we go. So this is definitely red. There's no food coloring in there at all. And it smells like cream soda, but it has another another layer of something in there. Definitely a cream soda taste. I haven't had cream soda in years. And this is a really, really good one. So we have one here that's made by Crush, but it's a lot, well, I mean, all of them are gonna be sweet, but that one's a lot sweeter. I like this. That's really good and it almost, like I said, it has another layer of flavor in, in there and I can't figure out what it is. You can definitely taste the cream soda, but I don't know if it's just another kind of like, like artificial strawberry cherry kind of flavor, but it tastes very much like candy. Yeah, definitely tastes like red candy. That's really good. That's really tasty. So it's called Big Red. I can't remember if I said what it was called. And I think this is specifically from Waco, Texas. So that's pretty cool. So let's just lay that aside. Let's see what else is in here. So um, this is Texas Roots Honey Toasted Pecans. So these are from H-E-B. 
which I've heard of. We don't have it here, obviously. Oh, I can smell them already. They smell really, really good. They're definitely fully coated <laughs> with the honey and the kind of the candy coating. It's really thick, but that is nice. I like those. Those are really, really good. Oh, wow. It's funny because Alberta, they say Alberta is very much the Texas of Canada because we're really big in like oil and stuff like that here. So this is really exciting. So we've got a couple of little things in here. So next up we've got Texas Pecan Praline. So this is like, um, it's kind of like caramel, but it has big hunks of pecans in there. That is really sweet. So that is very much, like I said, kind of like a, like a caramel or I'm sure you guys know what praline is like. And then it has big hunks of praline. That's good. Really, really super sweet. So we have a whole bunch of these. They're milk candy wafers. So I can't really see what it's like just from the packaging. So I'm gonna open this up and we'll have a look. So it's too small for me to see what's in there, but it's like, it's like this kind of coating on the outside that's really thin, like this candy coating. And then on the inside, it has like this, uh, almost like a caramel type filling, but I can't place the flavor. It's almost like savory, but sweet at the same time. So let me know, have you, have you guys ever had these? I think they're specifically from Texas. I think she said everything in the box is gonna be specifically from where she's from, but that was definitely a unique flavor. I've never tried anything like that before. Have a little bit more big red. It almost has a spicy kind of aftertaste to it. I like it. It's just something I've never ever had before. I think I've got everything out of the box now. So we have a couple of non-food items. So we have a keychain that says, don't mess with Texas. So I'll definitely be putting that on my keys. And then we have a fridge magnet that has Texas and then it has like all of the geographical area and when it was founded and all of that kind of stuff on there. So that's really cool. Definitely gonna be putting that on my fridge. That's beautiful. And then a couple of more food items. So super excited about these. So <laughs> I just pulled this out of the box. I'm really intrigued. So is it's Lucas Squinkles Salsa Getty. Don't even know guys. This looks so much fun. So it has a watermelon up here but it says salsa getty. So is this like spicy watermelon? I don't know, let's give it a try. You can definitely smell the watermelon and then it has this little packet inside. So are you supposed to like put it on top? I would assume so. I would assume so. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. We got scissors. Yeah, it's definitely a packet of salsa. This is the weirdest thing I've ever experienced in my life. Okay, so I got a little string here and it has some salsa on it. <laughs> so it's like sweet and spicy at the same time. Some of these things is the weirdest experience I've ever had, oh my God. But I don't hate it. That was the weirdest experience ever. <laughs> what are you guys doing down there in Texas? <laughs> That's so good. It actually reminds me of something that you would get at Stampede. If you guys know any, whoo, that's spicy. If you guys know anything about Stampede, it's like um, an outdoor, mainly it's a rodeo, but they have the, the fairway grounds and stuff and they have really weird food. This is definitely something that I would expect to get at, at Stampede, for sure. That is a weird experience and it, and it keeps, it's pretty hot. Granted, I'm a wimp when it comes to heat, but Squinkles, Lucas Squinkles Salsa Getty. Like I said, it was such a weird experience, but it's one of those things where you're like, this is weird, but you can't stop eating it. That's the craziest thing ever. 
Love it. Absolutely love it. But if you dump that whole thing in there, that's gonna be hot. Okay. So this, it's like a Dolce de Leche kind of candy. I'm starting to get the feeling that pecans is a thing in, in Texas. Am I right? Okay. So this is what it looks like. So it's very much like a big hunk of caramel. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut off a little bit just off the edge here. That's very much like the pecan praline. Mm. That's good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Moving on to something a little bit different. So this is La Molienda Coconut Candy. Mega Bandera. So it looks to be something Mexican. Let's just open this up, see what this is. So it just looks like to um, smush together coconut that's dyed. Yeah. It has the exact same consistency as the inside of a bounty bar. Do you guys get bounty down in, in the States? I'm assuming you do. I don't think it's a Canadian thing. But the texture and the taste is very much like the inside of a, a bounty chocolate bar. And then when I pulled these out, I got a blast from my past. Unbelievable. So these are spoonch or sponge marshmallow candy, marshmallow cookies, coconut, and strawberry. So what it is basically is it's a cookie and it has these marshmallow puffs with coconut on top. And we didn't get this brand, but I remember when I was young, like really, really, really young, and being at like a grandmother's house or something, and they had these cookies. Like these were like what we considered old people cookies. And it was very much the same thing, and I had completely forgotten about them. So like I said, this is a completely different brand, and I haven't had them for years. Like I don't even know if they still make them here. But it was like this, this just blast of nostalgia in my head. It's a little broken. So you have your cookie on the back, and then these marshmallow pieces on the front with coconut, and it has like a glob of strawberry jam in the middle. And this, like I said, was just like a blast from my past. So let me just get a, just get a bowl here. Like I said, I don't think they even make these here anymore. And the ones that we had were round, but this is like, like I said, it's like a nostalgia bomb going off in my brain right now. Because I remember having these back in Newfoundland and they were like old people cookies. And I'm not, that's a term of endearment. I'm not saying that in a bad way, but if you went to a grandma's house, they definitely had these. I think out of this package, that definitely has to be my, my most favorite thing. Absolutely. I really like the uh, the coconut bar though too that has like the Mexican flag on it. And then the last thing is this little container. I just pulled the, the plastic off. I didn't realize it was all gonna come off at once. But this is another uh, Lucas product like our salsa watermelon candy. And this literally just looks like flavored sugar. So kind of like you get in those pixie sticks. This has very much the same sort of smell as that and it is spicy, I can smell it already. Very much the same flavor. So <laughs> I'm wondering if you opened up one of those and you took this and just kind of sprinkled it over. Like I said, still the weirdest experience. I can't imagine having too much of this stuff. <laughs> like that's a big container of like this flavored sugar, I'm assuming it is. But yeah, these Lucas products are the weirdest, the weirdest thing but it's like weird in a good way. So that's it for the goodies from that box. I'm gonna have a little bit more big red. So thank you again so much to Natalie for sending that. I mean, 12 books plus a whole slew of goodies. And so, so kind of you to do that. And I'm so glad that I got to experience a little bit of Texas here in snowy Alberta. So thank you, thank you so much for sending that up. And I will be right back and we'll get into the rest of the haul with the books. 
Okay, so the first book that I got recently is actually not a vintage book, so this is the only thing in this haul that's not vintage. But I did get a copy of Slewfoot by Brom, and this is such a darling. I think everyone has a copy of this. But when I went on Amazon, um, even through Amazon, it's like $36 for the hardcover. So it was just one of those books that I kept putting off getting um, just because of the price. And then Book Outlet had them for, I think, 13 or $14. So I pounced on it and managed to get a copy. And so this is a, a, a folk horror tale that centers around witches, obviously. So I haven't read any of Brom, but he seems to get a lot of love through the booktube community. Um, so really, really, really super excited to have this. And the illustrations are just beautiful. So I'll show you a couple on the inside too. Just gorgeous illustrations. Really super creepy. So beautiful, beautiful illustrations on the inside. So I've been wanting to get to this one fairly quickly. Um, like I said, I'm kind of in a huge reading slump right now. So I want to pick up some shorter books, maybe some middle grade to try to get me back into the swing and then probably pick up this one. So hopefully going to get to this one soon. Let me know down below if you have you guys read this one. Did you enjoy it? Really, really looking forward to some great witchy books coming up here. So the first book that I got was a Fair Street Super Chiller. So this is Bad Moonlight. And I love the cover on this one. Some of the Fear Street, they're not my favorite covers, but this is great with all of the pink and purple and it says nighttime is the right time for terror. So here we follow Danielle and Danielle has been chosen as the lead singer of a band and she's really happy with their success and they've been traveling around and playing clubs and stuff. And then it says, but when nighttime falls, Danielle can feel the terror in the darkness. There's eerie howling outside of her window, and then a band member is killed, ripped to shreds by a wild animal. Danielle knows something is out there, lurking in the moonlight, something savage and hungry. So obviously a, a wolf or werewolf type tale here, so haven't read this one uh, with all of the Fear Street that I have read. I haven't read this particular one, and this is the first printing from 1995. And then next up is The Face. So this one um, is quite rare. I don't see it around a whole lot. And it says he had something to tell her from beyond the grave. So this is about a girl named Martha and she has amnesia after something terrible happened. And she can't remember anything from that night but she, they keep telling her that things will start coming back. And it says, but someone wants her to remember now. She draws a face over and over, the face of a dead boy. She can't control her hand, and she can't remember how he died. But she's going to find out the answer, even if it lies with the dead. So that seems like a really, really cool premise. Um, this one is in great condition as well. And it is also a first printing from February of 1996. And then I got two out of the kind of mini series, mini Fear Street series, the Cataluna Chronicles. So the first one is The Dark Secret. And I don't see these ones around a whole lot either. So it says stepsisters Regina and Lauren are thrilled. They've gotten their own wheels and this sexy Cataluna is one hot car. Too hot because inside the Cataluna the curse of bad luck Catherine lives on. And while Catherine is hunted in her own time, Regina and Lauren will be hunted in theirs because in this car evil evil is always in the driver's seat. So this is the first one in that mini series, and I'm not gonna read the back of this one because it looks like there's something that is given away there, um, but this is also The Deadly Fire. So two from that Catalina Chronicles mini series. And then I was super excited to see this one. So this is In Quest of Ghosts by Hans Holzer, and I am on the lookout for vintage Hans Holzer books. He is a real pioneer in the paranormal community and uh, he's pretty much investigated them all. So um, this one is true stories, obviously. Now, unfortunately, there's some writing on the inside cover, but it is in pencil. So I can probably get that off fairly quickly. And this one's from 1993. So it's got Ghosts of the American War of Independence, 
the conference house ghosts, the hauntings at the White House, and many, many more. So like I said, I'm definitely looking for more Hans Holzer books. They're really hard to come by unless you find them on eBay or something like that, which of course can be pretty pricey. So I was super, super excited to get this one. This is going to be the first in my collection of Hans Holzer. Super, super excited to read it. And then out of the Point Horror series, we've got The Return of the Vampire. Love the cover on this one. And it says on the back, uh, this follows a girl named Devnay, and she wishes for beauty. All she wants is to be beautiful because if she is, then she's going to be popular and get all the friends and get all the boys and the whole thing. And it says that her and her family move into um, a house. And it's a dark, strange house with a circular tower. And it's there that she hopes that her wish will be heard and answered because he lives in the tower. I will give you beauty, my dear, the vampire purrs, and in return, Devne will give him what he desires. But as Devne wishes for more, so does the vampire, and soon it's too late. She has wished for too much. So that's a careful what you wish for type story. So super, super excited to have this one for the collection. In really great condition, and this one is from 1992. And then the last book that I have to show you guys is number seven in the Fright Time series. So I have, I believe, four or five from this series already, and they don't show up a whole lot. I don't see them around a whole lot. And this has three kind of short stories of middle grade or YA terror. So this one has Come to the Fear, Trapped, and Time for Terror. And just the little synopsis that it has for one of the stories here, it says Calvin and Zoe are all psyched up about being junior guides at the town's annual fair. But the fun time turns to fear and their tasks to terror when they meet a strange old man whose horrible prediction have an airy, scary way of coming true. So that's really, really cool. So like I said, I have a couple of others in this series and this one is in great condition. So super, super happy to have this to add to the collection. Okay, now on to the vintage inspired clothing that I got. So super excited about these items. Um, one of them I actually don't have here because it's in the wash. I wore it like three days last week. But starting off with a hoodie, so this one features the hilarious House of Frightenstein. So just look at that. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Black hoodie, and these are super cozy. So I wanted to wear at least one of the items and wash it so I could really let you know how these um, applications are standing up and everything seems great. So super, super cozy. And of course, if you grew up in Canada in the 80s and 90s, you probably know the hilarious House of Frightenstein and on one of the sleeves. So this is something I love about this company is their designs aren't just on the front and back. They have a lot of things on the sleeves as well. So here we have an illustration on the sleeve and it says 50th anniversary until Brucey lives. And the other hoodie that I got was a front zip hoodie. I'll insert a picture of it here because like I said, it's actually in the wash right now. Um, and it bothers me endlessly that I could only get this in navy blue, but I really, really wanted one. And it has the classic YTV logo on the front. So I grew up on YTV. I remember when it first started, I believe it was back in 1988, and it had all of the great kids shows. So YTV is very much like a, a Canadian version of Nickelodeon, and it was great because you would come home from school and they'd have all of the y YTV VJs, and they were kind of in between the shows. They would do little skits and announcements and just chat and read letters and stuff. So they were video jockeys. So they did it kind of like, um, shows that you hear on the radio but it was on tv and they had all of the great canadian kids shows and the american ones too so i lived for ytv so i had to get this hoodie um it actually matches a pair of earrings that i have that i forgot to put in so i'm going to grab those and because I, I really want to show you guys what they look like okay so here we go i got these earrings actually a couple of months ago i haven't had a chance to wear them yet um but they're great and they have the classic YTV logo and I got them from a really great Etsy shop. So I will link that shop down below for you guys because she has great earrings and 
I love earrings. So they have the classic YTV logo to match what's on the hoodie. And the hoodie also has um, some of the YTV specialty logos up and down one side of the sleeve. And so it has the zone and the YTV dark night and the whole thing. So very, very nostalgic. And then I got three t-shirts. So the first one, and these t-shirts are huge. So I usually fit into a 2XL and I wish I had a downsized to these actually because they're absolutely massive, but it's going to be super cozy. So the first one I got was Reading Rainbow. So of course this is not a Canadian show, but it's one that everybody loves from their childhood. Of course, hosted by LeVar Burton and you know, that theme song just sticks in your head, doesn't it? So super, super happy with this. It's a little something that's a little bit more bright than I would typically wear, but I just had to get it. I mean, Reading Rainbow is absolutely classic. And then next up, this is the one that I ordered specifically for from this haul because uh, I wanted to wear this in a collaboration video that I have coming up. And so, so happy with this. So it is the YTV Dark Knight logo. So unfortunately, they only have the skull logo. They don't have the other one. That's just kind of the line graphic, but so happy with this. It's huge. It's a massive um, like statement piece and YTV's Dark Knight, if you don't know, every Halloween, the station had like this Halloween party and we would all rush home from trick-or-treating so we could watch it and it was all of the VJs. They would do skits and have prizes and all of that kind of thing. Everybody was dressed up and they had a marathon of shows. So the first couple of years they would play like three or four new episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? And then as it continued on they looped in things like Buffy or Goosebumps and stuff like that. And I lived for YTV's Dark Knight. I really did. I lived for it. I loved it. So when I saw that they had the classic logo on a t-shirt, I just, I had to get it. I had to get it. And then of course it's got the regular YTV logo that matches my earrings on the back here. So super, super excited to have this, not only for that collaboration video, but just to wear in general. So really, really super nostalgic, especially for a kid that grew up in the 90s in Canada. And then the last one, um, I wanted to go to Electric Circus so bad when I was growing up. So I had to get the Electric Circus logo t-shirt. There's nothing on the back, no. So again, if you grew up in Canada, you probably knew Electric Circus very, very well. So basically at the City TV building in Toronto, they would shut it down and there would be a humongous dance party with all of the top 40 hits. And of course it had the wonderful 90s dance sound and all of the crop top. So definitely, definitely had to get um, their Electric Circus design. So, so happy with this. And of course, if you wear it out, guaranteed other people are going to have a, a switch that's flipped in their brain and they're gonna remember the wonderful days of Electric Circus. So that's it for the clothing haul. So I got three t-shirts and two hoodies and I'm happy with every single piece. Like I said, the only thing I would caution is that with the sizing, you might want to size down. So make sure you check the size chart and then the other thing is these items can be a little bit pricey because these are actually officially licensed items. So um, they're a little bit more pricey than what you would get probably on you know, Redbubble or, or Etsy or whatever, um, but it's well worth it. The quality is there and it came in no time. I'm really happy with the service. So I'm gonna leave a link down below to RetroKid, both their Instagram and their website and please go support this amazing Canadian company because they've got a lot more up their sleeves. I know they're releasing an inspector gadget line that's going to be coming up here pretty soon and super, super excited for that. So that's everything I have for the haul for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this old school April themed haul. Um, leave me a comment down below because you know I love chatting with you guys. But until next time, stay spooky everybody. Bye.